Abbott. What time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. It's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure. Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Stop that yelling, Costello. Come over here. I need I need ten thousand dollars in a hurry. Will you loan it to me? Ha <laughs> uh-huh. ha! Uh, haven't got that much, eh? Well, how about eight thousand? Ha ha ha! How about five thousand? <laughs> One thousand? <000? laughs> Costello, when are you going to stop that laughing? When you get down to about three dollars and a quarter. <laughs> I should have known better. If you stopped chasing girls, you'd have money. I don't chase women, Abbott. I'm repulsive to women. Repulsive to women? Who told you that? Women. Well, <laughs> haven't you ever had a real girl, Lou? Oh, yes, I have. Once, Abbott. Her name was Mabel Kumquat. <laughs> Dear old Mabel Kumquat. Mm. Sweet kid. I bet. Met her at a delicatessen factory in Patterson. I was a salami sniper. A, sal- a, a, a salami s- sniper? Snipper. All right, so what is... Well, a salami snipper? That's an endless chain of salami would go by me every 20 inches. I would go snip, snip. (laughs) Go on. One day I looked up and there stood Mabel. I stood there looking at her for 15 minutes. And what happened? Abbott, did you ever see a salami two miles long? (laughs) And that was the start of your romance, eh? Oh, yes. One night I took her up. I took her up to Bung Mountain. Wait a minute. There's no Bung mountain in Patterson. Have it when I take a girl up a mountain to a mountain, it's bung. Then when you came engaged, I slipped the ring on a finger. I didn't have a ring, so I used a cigar band. Then where did you get the cigar band? Mabel happened to be smoking a white owl at the time. <laughs> I know it was a white owl. I could smell the feathers. Oh. Costello, you could graduate with honors from an idiot's college. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, boys. Here's a serious-looking fellow trying to get a word in edgewise. Let's see what he has to say. Costello, stop that yelling. Where have you been? I've been, I, I've been hiding, hiding my Christmas present. Have you finished with your Christmas shopping, Lou? No, no. On the way down here, I stopped at Nancy's department store, and boy, was that place crowded. Lots of people, eh? Ah, but it was so crowded. While I was in there, my belt broke, and it was 20 minutes before my pants fell down. Right. <laughs> Another thing, I can't stand those women shoppers. What's wrong with women shoppers? Well, I was standing by the notion counter. There was one woman there. She was turning everything bottom side up to see where it was made. She was turning everything bottom side up. Everything bottom side up. The floor worker saved me just in time. <laughs> uh, never mind that. Did you write for a dollar ninety-four? Look, Lou, skip that. Did you write your letter to Santa Claus yet? Did I write my letter to Santa Claus? Yes. I ain't gonna tell you. Oh, come on. Did you or did you not write a letter to Santa Claus? 
Well, if you must know, I did. And I asked him to bring me a new bicycle. But, but Santa Claus brought you a new bicycle, a brand new bicycle, two years ago. Yes, but, but don't you think I'm old enough now to have a boy's bicycle? <laughs> Hello. I hate to interrupt your program, but I've got some bad news for you. Uh, out with it, man. What is it? Uh, Mr. Costello, your Uncle Tom was just run over by a truck on Wiltshire Boulevard. My Uncle Tom was run over by a truck on Wiltshire Boulevard? Thanks for telling me. Abbott. What? You got a pencil? What do you want with a pencil? I want to cross Uncle Tom off my Christmas list. <laughs> How can you say that, Costello? How can you be so heartless? Isn't there any love in your family around Christmas time? Oh, sure. Our family all love each other. Last Christmas, my Aunt May gave my Uncle Mike a broken arm for Christmas. That... A broken arm? Yep. What kind of a Christmas present is that? Well, after she broke it, she wrapped it up as a gift. I... <laughs> I'll bet your house is a pleasant place around Christmas. Oh, you time. should have been there last year. Aunt Alma called Uncle Jim a no good, and Aunt May hit her over the head, hit her over the head with a vase. <laughs> Then my uncle, my uncle hit my brother Pat over the head with a cane bottom chair, and then Uncle Tom hit my cousin Vincent with the umbrella stand, and my sister Marie fired three shots at my sister-in-law. What happened? Well, before you knew it, an argument started. <laughs> well, I want to tell you something, Abbott, and speaking of arguments, what are you going to get your wife for Christmas? Well, I, I gave her some money. She wanted to buy herself a new corset. Lovely. Yes, but she can't seem to find one that will fill her budget. She's so fat, nothing would fit her budget. <laughs> Costello, my wife is just pleasantly plump. She's not fat. That reminds me, Abbott. My sister would like to borrow one of your wife's stockings to hang over the fireplace on Christmas Eve. What does she want with one of my wife's stockings? She's expecting a grand piano. I... <laughs> Are you trying to insinuate that my wife Betty is fat? Well... Did you ever see her in a bathing suit? Yes, I have. <laughs> Repulsive, isn't it? I... Uh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Who put that in this script? I told you, Abbott, you should have bought those writers' presents. I... <laughs> Did you, did you buy the presents? No, but I asked them what they wanted, and they said to me, Louie, you know what we like best. You just go out and get it. Wrap it up and put it under a Christmas tree. Well, why didn't you do it? Ah, but you can't wrap up a saloon. I... <laughs> well, if you didn't get the writers anything, you should have at least bought uh, their wives something. I did, Abbott. I gave each one of them a corsage. No, not corsage. Not that's, corsage. That's corsage. Spells that A-G-E is pronounced like odd, as in corsage or, or garage. Now, where did you get them? From the man who picks up the garbage. <laughs> well, I gotta go now, Abbott. <laughs> I gotta do some shopping for Louis B. Mayer. He wants me to get a box of cigars. He's gonna give them to Margaret O'Brien for Christmas. Now, wait a minute. Why would he want to give Margaret O'Brien a box of cigars for Christmas? He wants to stunt her growth. <laughs> All right, Costello, that did it. Now I'm going to tell you what I think of you. You're the lousiest comedian on the radio. You tell the worst jokes on the air, and furthermore... It's my brother-in-law. I wouldn't come to see your show again if you gave me a million dollars. You stink! <laughs> Sounded good, Lou. This guy means it. Tough guy, huh? Do you want to step outside and say that? Certainly I'll step outside and say it. Why? Well, there's a lot of people out there in front that couldn't get in the studio. Maybe they'd like to hear it, too. <laughs> That's what I thought. You're a yellow rat. A yellow rat? That did it. I'm not taking that sitting down. Oh, you're not, eh? No. <laughs> he got me, Abbott. Where'd you get you, Costello? As I said before, I'm not taking this sitting down. <laughs> Hey, look, Costello, it's our secretary, Viola Vaughn. Well, yeah. Costello, I didn't expect to see you here tonight. I thought you'd be up at the North Pole looking for Santa Claus. Nah, it's too cold up there. My Uncle Jim moved up there to the North Pole. Last I heard of him, he was keeping company with a, a girl polar bear, and he was going to get married. To a girl polar bear? What stopped them? Her parents objected. <laughs> If I remember right, your Uncle Jim took your cousin Vincent to Alaska with him, didn't yes, he? Yes, and one day Vincent was fishing for whales. He hooked one and started to pull on his line. Then the whale pulled, then Vincent pulled, then the whale pulled. Uh, where is Vincent now? I don't know. But every time I get a postcard from him, he sends regards from Jonah. <laughs> Bill, you look so pretty. Why don't you and I step, step out together after the show? I'm in a gay mood tonight. I'm feeling my oats. Yes, Abbott. Have you been out to lunch with Trigger again? I <laughs> There's no reason why Viola shouldn't go out with me. I'm a regular ladies' man. 
Why, women throw themselves at my feet. I don't blame him. Anything to get away from that face. I... <laughs> Costello, it's my turn to go out with Viola. Why, you've been over to her house five nights running. Oh, oh no, Mr. Abbott. Only four nights running. Last night, my father didn't chase him. <laughs> ah, look, there's no use in you boys fighting over me. I want to find a big, strong, robust, romantic man. How about me? Okay, you can help me look. <laughs> Costello, I don't blame Viola for not wanting to go out with you. You're fat, you're ugly, your front tooth is missing. Oh, no, it's not. I got it right here in my pocket. I... Uh, Costello, honey, what are you going to get me for Christmas? You know, I need a new car. A new car? Well, well, Costello, as soon as a new, new car prices come down a little, maybe you can get her a new car. <laughs> I don't think so, Abbott. I went to a dealer yesterday and I said, how long will it be before I can get a new car for $900? He felt my pulse and says, you'll never make it. Oh, forget about Viola. We've got a lot of people on this show and we've got to get them Christmas presents. Come on, let's go across the street to the department store. <laughs> See, this store is crowded. Look over there. It's our band leader, Matty Malnick. Hiya, fellas. I'm looking to buy some records. Costello, do you know where the music department is? No, I don't. Well, you take the, down this aisle to the escalator, then you take the escalator to the next floor, then you go towards the front of the store. Just a minute. Wait a minute. You asked me. I asked you what? How to get to the music department. Well, you go down this aisle to the escalator, oh, no, then you're right no, here. No, come on. Now, come on. Now, get out of here, Matty Malnick. Now, look, Costello. Some musician. He hey. just don't give a toot. Look, Costello. <laughs> Costello. There's Santa Claus in the toy department. Hey, come on, come on over there. I want to talk to him. Are you Santa Claus? Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> yes, little man. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What's the idea of kicking me in the leg? That's for last year. You... <laughs> Costello, that's no way to act. Santa Claus is here to find out what you want for Christmas. Now, yeah. go ahead and tell him what you want for Christmas. Gee, go Santa Claus, I wish that Christmas morning I could find Rita Hayworth in my stocking. With those fat legs of yours, you'd have plenty of room for the Andrews sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Santa Claus, that was pretty good. Oh, it's nothing. I tell those jokes all the time up at the North Pole. Who's your straight man? A penguin. You want to trade? I... <laughs> No, I don't want to trade. I'm too fond of this penguin. I keep him in a bottle of ink. Oh, a fountain penguin. <laughs> Santa Claus. Hmm? Costello's just a kid at heart. He craves affection. The thing for you to do is mother him. Oh, well, that's different. Sure. Here, here. Come on. Get up on my knee, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> now... Put your head under my beard. <laughs> now I've got you. Santa Claus. Santa Claus, what are you doing? I told you to mother him. Oh, I thought you said smother him. <laughs> well, I hate to break it up, man, but it's time to change the subject for just about 60 seconds. musical Christmas gift to all of you, Hal Winters in a Christmas Song, along with Matty Malnick and his music. Oh, 
the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping, and I brought some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodbye, how I'll hate going out in the storm. But if you really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. The fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I'll hate going out in the storm. But if you'll really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. The fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. By Hal Winters. <laughs> hey, Evan. All right. My brother Pat just told me some wonderful news. Tomorrow he starts playing with the girls in Phil Spitalny's orchestra. What uh, instrument uh, will he play? No instrument. He's just going to play with the girls. I... <laughs> I thought your brother was a musician. Oh, he's a singer. He sings just like Nelson Eddy. Uh, does he sing uh, Shortening Bread? Well, he could, but the places he sings in are so small and narrow, he can't sing Shortening Bread. He's got to sing right crisp. <laughs> Mind that. What are you doing with that newspaper? I wanted to show it, Abbott. My Sam Shovel Detective series has become so popular the newspapers have taken it off the radio page and put it on the front page. Look. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I don't see it on the front page. There it is. There it is. Under crimes committed in Los Angeles today. <laughs> and besides that, I'm getting more fan mail than ever. Listen to this one. Dear Lou Costello, if your Sam Shovel Detective series is not the funniest program on the air, then I'm not the next president of the United States. Who's it from? Tom Dewey. <laughs> Mind that. What is your Sam Shovel detective mystery for tonight? It's one of my latest cases, Abbott. I call it the case of Clarence, the dress designer who gave himself up to the police, or I'm all yours in buttons and bows. <laughs> and now to the further adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. <laughs> Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. I'm sitting here in my little office. It's mighty chilly in here. I think I'll throw another log on a fire. Every time I build a log fire in my office, a landlord complains. Maybe it's because I have no fireplace. <laughs> I pick up the newspaper. I drop it on my desk. It was the mirror. <laughs> I read the one ads. Woman who washes Mondays and Tuesdays wants place to hang out on Wednesdays. <laughs> Here's another one. Wanted man to teach. Nuclear division of atomic astrophysical cyclotronic fissures. No experience necessary. <laughs> I glance out of my window to see what's playing in the movie across the street. <laughs> Must be that new picture, The Cry of the City. <laughs> Next door to the movie is a Hollywood nightclub. Those Hollywood nightclubs cut the liquor so much the bartenders have to have a barber's license. <laughs> in the winter, they have to put alcohol in a whiskey to keep it from freezing. <laughs> I remember once my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad, was so disgusted that he went into that joint to drink himself to death. He didn't get drunk. But there was so much water in the whiskey, he nearly drowned. <laughs> Suddenly the phone rings. 
Sam Shovel speaking. Sam Shovel, you're on the spot. Get wise of yourself. You've got to play ball with us. Who are you? You see, I have a football team. We'll play anybody. <laughs> One line went south. <laughs> I look out the window again. Crowds, nothing but crowds. Everybody doing the last-minute Christmas shopping. The crowds give me an idea. I'm going to write to my congressman. I haven't changed Christmas to April. The stores aren't so crowded then. <laughs> in the crowd, I see my pal, Lieutenant Abbott. Abbott is the cheapest guy in the world all year round. But when Christmas comes, he'd give you the shirt off his back. I know. Last year for Christmas, he gave me a dirty shirt. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott is a great detective. He worked on the Morelli case, and in two days he had it sewed up. Then he got the Mary case, and it only took him three days to sew that up. Then came the famous Lewis case. He sewed that up in 24 hours. He never carried a gun. Just a sewing machine and three extra bobbins. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel. Sam, tomorrow's Christmas Eve, and I dropped in to find out what you want for Christmas. Well... I live just a stone's throw from Hedy Lamar's house, and my bedroom window is just a stone's throw from her window. What do you want for Christmas, Sam? A stone. <laughs> Lieutenant, why don't you send me some mistletoe so I can kiss the girls under it? That's not mistletoe. That's mistletoe. Missile, not muscle. When I want to kiss a girl, I got to use muscle. <laughs> Sam, I want you to help me on a job. I've been assigned to guard at a department store during the Christmas rush. I guarded the Broadway Hollywood store last Christmas. I put a man on a Fifth Street door, a man on a Broadway door, a man on a Sixth Street door. How did you make out? They didn't lose a single door. <laughs> but all the windows were stolen. <laughs> Come on, Sam. We're going down to the store right now. <laughs> Sam, this is a big store. They sell anything from sailboats to a pound of pecans. I see. They got everything from sloop to nuts. Come, gentlemen, you'll have to go to work right away. The shoplifters are stealing everything in aisle nine. Where is aisle nine? Well, this is aisle seven, that's aisle eight, and that... How do you like that? They stole aisle nine. <laughs> I think I like this job. Say, who is that gorgeous girl behind the crowded counter? Oh, that's Miss Fairchild. She works in lady slippers. She's beautiful. What else does she do? She just works in lady slippers, that's all. Stop me! Stop me! Stop me! Hey, Stop wait a minute. Look, that kid. He just stole a pair of roller skates. I'll get him. You let go of me! Let me go, you copper! Let me go! I'll teach you to steal. I'm going to lock you up. Lieutenant, I'll take charge of this case. You keep your eye on the store. Come with me, son. Please don't take me to jail. Please don't take me to jail. I didn't have the heart to take that kid to jail. He didn't look like a bad kid. He was poorly dressed. His face was dirty, but I could still see some of his freckles. His name was Johnny. I took him to my little office and sat him down in a chair. I could see he was scared, plenty scared. Gee, Mr. Shovel, I, I don't want to go to jail. And I don't want you to go to jail, son. That's why I brought you here. Those were plenty of expensive roller skates you took off the counter in that store, Johnny. Oh, gee, they were only a dollar ninety-eight. I'm not talking about the cost in money, Johnny. It's the cost in shame and disgrace. Not only to you, but to your mom and your dad. Gee, I never thought about that. Mom and dad... That's the trouble with doing the wrong thing, Johnny. Most time it hurts others more than the guy that does it. Gee, gee, you're a funny guy. You're supposed to be a detective, a cop. And me and the kids in my neighborhood, we ain't got no use for coppers. But gee, I kind of like you. You don't talk like no cop. You're, you're more like a, a, a friend. Johnny, cops aren't bad guys. Every cop on the force wants to be the friends with every kid on his beat. When a kid is in trouble, if he'd run to a cop instead of away from him, he'd find out that cops are pretty regular fellows. You see, Johnny, you're a kid and I'm a cop. But lucky for us, we're both living in a wonderful country. A country that's interested in the welfare of its children. Our police know that no kid wants to be bad. It's just bad environment. Neglect on the part of parents. Lack of love and understanding. 
That makes a kid go wrong. Yeah? And, and are you sure that all cops is my friends? All cops, Johnny. Aha! Uh -huh. There you are. E even him? Even him. <laughs> I don't know what this is all about, Sam. But I gotta get this kid to the lockup. This is Christmas Eve and I gotta... You gotta get a little of the Christmas spirit, Lieutenant. I think Johnny's very sorry for what he did. He'll never do it again. Well, he tried to get away from me. He ran from the law. That's a sign of guilt. Honest, I won't never do it again. I promise I won't. Besides, Lieutenant, I think I've made Johnny understand that cops are his friends. Yeah? Johnny, if you know that cops are a kid's best friends, you, you've really learned something. Yeah, well, there's only one thing that puzzles me. What is it, Johnny? Well, Lieutenant Abbott's a cop, ain't he? Yes. Well, how could a guy with a face like that be any kind of a cop? Oh, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, it's Christmas Eve. Listen. I promised my wife I'd be, I'd be in church, saying my prayers, singing hymns. And here I am in this broken down... You don't have to be in church for that, Lieutenant. How about it, Johnny? Know the words to that song? Yeah, I think so. Johnny, let's try it, huh? What do you say? Ponder this. Stella, before signing off, let's wish all our listeners a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. And I'd also like to say Merry Christmas to our fine crew that helped us put the show together. Our writing staff, which is headed by Eddie Fulmer with Paul Collin, Pat Costello, Martin Ragaway, and Leonard Stern. Now, don't forget the swell boys, the band, and our leader, Maddie Melnick. And our vocalist, Hal Winters. And a Merry Christmas to our producer, Charles Vander. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody, and Merry Christmas to everybody in Paddington. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. And be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station.